Hello everyone and welcome to the preview show. It's been a while since we've had to pick ourselves up from a defeat, isn't it? Well, uh, unfortunately, Wednesday night did happen. I hope you've got it out of your system where you've had a little bit of a sulk or just gone out and got battered. But if you haven't, I've got some good news for you. There's nothing sure to put a smile on your face more than a Saturday night out in Newcastle. And that's exactly what the Reds have got ahead of us in this penultimate game of the season. I've got two lovely people here, hopefully going to spread the sunshine a little bit more. I've got Lizzie Doyle and Jay McKenna. And Lizzie, I know you are a little bit upset yeah, still yeah. yesterday, but I'm hoping that the more we talk about this fantastic team and what they've been still able to achieve at the end of the season will feel a little bit better. But we've been in a really long, intense period of this season. We've been maintaining this level for so long, for so high. And yet it still feels like maybe as we stand today, it's odds against for both of these trophies. So with that in mind, do you think Klopp's got a bit of a job on his hands trying to keep the positivity within the squad, keep them focused on the job at hand? I don't know if, it's got a, if he's got a task, but we are all realists here. Um, and the, the fact is that the league is out of our hands. The Champions League actually is in our hands. It's just a, it's just a really hard task. And I think to try and tell your team to go and beat a Barcelona, you know, 4-3, uh, you know, score four goals against Barcelona is a tough ask. But you know what? If if there's any Liverpool side that I've ever seen that can score three goals at Anfield when asked on, you know, a big European night with the crowd behind them, it's this side. It's this record-breaking Liverpool side that might just potentially be the most unluckiest side in history. But, you know, the, the thing is, is this season is not over. The Barcelona tie is not over. It's hard to see it that way, including myself, because of the three-goal lead. But until that whistle's gone, you know, it, the, the game isn't over. And until that whistle is blown at Wolves, I'm convinced that the league isn't over either. I think it's going down to the last game. And it's really hard to pick yourself up from that because what, what's quite hard is that we all know that we didn't deserve that scoreline. Um, and I think that's quite hard to, to get your head around, uh, maybe the idea of an away goal. But it is what it is. You stew on it, it doesn't do anyone any good. We've got a task on our hands. We've got two cups to potentially win. We need to get back on it, get our heads together, and go and have a lovely time at Newcastle on Saturday. See? <laughs> See, everyone's feeling a little bit more positive That's it. already, isn't Lizzie's it? just going to be piped into the dressing room with that. <laughs> just have hey. a nice night at Newcastle Hey, I'm going down. They can all come out for a baby with me later. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, it is. It's up. fine, whatever. It's all the same, isn't it? So we can all have a lovely time. Go for a kebab. They put chips in the kebab top. Up there. Really? Yeah. Oh, that was exactly what I wanted to say. really selling me castle in it. Don't get chips in your kebab, yeah. You know what, though? Um, that might be enough. I mean, it's a Saturday the night kebab. game. Yeah. Or, well, or the Saturday night. They've got to help themselves, Mo. I, I don't know, yeah. yeah, Yeah, I mean, it depends on how good the kebab is, really. But, I mean, obviously, Newcastle's one of those. It always feels like a bit of an event going up there. Because, I mean, partly because it takes so bloody long. But it's one of those grounds. It's in the centre of town. It's very much of its own thing. But it has been intimidating in the past. I mean, I don't want to bring everyone down again a little bit. But... If we look at the records of both teams, recently at St James's Park, it doesn't make good reading for Liverpool fans. Newcastle have won six of their eight home games in 2019, only conceded five goals in that time. And for us, we all remember, well, a lot of us remember the 5-1 game uh, in two, the end of 2008. Since then, we've only won once, including in seven games, including four defeats. Oh, no, I just so talked about it on a kebab, and now you're bringing it all down. But, 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 no, 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 They are great, they are great, don't get me wrong. But look, see, what I was going to say, Jay, is that you can look at all those numbers and it paints one picture, but we remember how good we're playing right now. And there's been lots of times a season where we've done things that we haven't done in X, Y, Z or our years. Surely we're good enough to be able to break this trend. I was a bit surprised at them numbers, to be fair. If you'd have said to me, what's going to Newcastle? Like, I'd have said, oh, well, we've got a better record there than, than those numbers yeah. certainly <laughs> suggest. Um, so it shows how much attention I've paid. But I, I, I think you're right, Mo. I think Liverpool are going to, you know, they've had the disappointments of, of Barcelona. They'll take some positives from that. I think they'll know they, they were there, are there about. They know that for the sake of maybe taking a couple of chances, it would be very different for the sake of a you know a Lionel Messi, which we're not going to have to encounter on Saturday or in any other game, um, you know, in the league. 
they know that you know they can compete. They know that they're better than most teams there, as the league table shows. I, I think what's on it is also important for Liverpool. I think you know it's it. You know, it's not easy to get a Barcelona result like that out of your mind because you probably were thinking, well, hang on, we've got a really good chance here, particularly how the game will have felt to the players. But they've got an opportunity there to maybe go and send a bit of a statement to say, well, OK, Barcelona was that, but this is Liverpool that you're really going to see. And also, you know, send the message to Manchester City. You know, it's almost, I think, a welcome distraction for the for the players and the supporters. It's, well, OK, that's the league, that's the European Cup, possibly, potentially, maybe done with, but... You know, no Liverpool are going to go and do something in the league, and the fact that Man City play two days later, you know, means well we're going out there on a Saturday night. We know what we've got to do. We know we've got to win. We've got to send a message to them. So there'll be some pressure on that, but only the kind of pressure that I'd imagine these players put on, put themselves under anyway to, to to reach the levels they have. So you know, I'm I'm hopeful and expectant that Liverpool will turn up there. You know, the team that we can put out dependent, which you know we'll come on to, and you know try and send a bit of a message and. You know, Newcastle are very good, we can't underestimate that, you know, they've got some, some really uh, good attacking players who are in a bit of a run of th form at the minute, but, you know, you'd hope that Liverpool, and maybe it would send them, that would send a message to Man City that, you know, yeah, Newcastle have been playing well, well, Liverpool have blunted them, you know, Man City then have to go and do that, I think this season's going to be one of questions, you know, can you keep, you know, your line on Messi's cry, can you, you know, can Man City respond to Liverpool all of the time? Well, you know, Leicester are in a good run of form. They're going to go and have to answer that same you know, mm -hmm. question. You know, we're going to both play teams that potentially have something to play for on the last game of the season. So, you know, I think Liverpool go there, answer that, that question well. I think, you know, I'm, I, ex I think Liverpool will win. I'm not going to say this, I expect them to win like it's going to be easy because those numbers certainly show it shouldn't be. But, you know, I think for the, the response we'll get from the Barcelona results and, and the league position and you know applying that pressure to Man City, I think you'll see Liverpool turn up with a very professional performance. I like the sound of that. You've definitely convinced me that we're going to see some positivity. And it's interesting talking about the pressure and the, the title race, Lizzie, because we forget that obviously Man City lost up there. So they're going to be coming into this game hoping that it can be another banana skin for us. But if we go out there and do the job, we put the pressure straight back on them for Monday night. Yeah, um, it's, I'm with Jay, it's not an easy game. I think we are the better side um, and we should win. But the key word being sure than anything literally happens in football. But I take that with a positive spin. That I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm really into this idea again, what Jay said of asking questions, because it feels like, you know, City have never been asked this many questions with the side that they've had and how good they are. And they've got to perform if Liverpool perform. The pressure is going to constantly be on. Newcastle are decent. They're going to want to upset whatever party. Don't, don't be thinking Rafa Benitez is going to be rolling over. Do you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. And the thing is, it's the, the, I, I actually um, spoke to a Newcastle fan for our team talk show on Tuesday. And we were talking about it being the last game of the season, but it's also probably Rafa's last game as Newcastle manager. They're not expecting him to sign a, a new contract. Believe me, if there's one game that Rafa will want to go out with a bang against, it's against Liverpool on a Saturday night for Newcastle. And that crowd will be banged up for that game. Um, we can't take anything for granted. What I'm a little bit wary of, um, if, if, if it's really a thing, is the energy in terms of men mentally and physically so how much did that take out of them you know we've had you'll have what Thursday Friday and then Saturday's your game but then so they'll be tired from that game because to me it looked like they were all blowing a little bit but probably yeah. because of the heat and the, the work rate that they'd have to put in to you know to try to, to keep Barcelona to 1-0 at 75 minutes it takes a lot of work um, and they all looked a bit tired but you know what mentally it would have took a lot out of them so to then pick themselves up physically but mentally to go back in but whether you like it or not, Klopp's done amazing on, on keeping them focused on one game at a time. But they've also got to think about two days later, three days later, to go and try and you climb a mountain. And this is this is where now we'll see how this Liverpool if this Liverpool team is capable of winning a league or a Champions League, even if it's not this year, as to the reaction to these I've games. I've just said that to, I've just seen Ben John upstairs and I was saying that regardless of what happens, I think Liverpool will want to send the message because you don't want your season to end in a whimper. No. Because I think that carries through into next season, that says that when it really got tough, when we came up against the best at the elite level, we fell a bit short. Now, we did do that last season against Real Madrid, we fell a bit short. And I think Liverpool want to show that, no, we're still at that level. 
we're not, we're not, you know, all we're pushing through and we're nearly getting in. We've demonstrated that with our points target in the league, but I think it's got to be that you respond from a European Cup semi final defeat because they're going to come. Liverpool are going to be in more European Cup semi finals. I'm going to lose some of them. And it, we'd hope and expect that we're still competing for the league at them time of year as well. It's great to be at the business end, but that means losing on a Wednesday and responding on a Saturday to try and win the league. Yeah. You know, that, that we've got to be doing that. And I think that, that, that will show, our, as you say, how far the players have come. OK, now, as you've seen over the course of the season with the preview, we've gone on a few little journeys. We've spent our own version of Michael Palin, a.k.a. Robbo, to go to every away ground in the league and get a real sense of what it's like out there, see any boozers that are worth going to, and chat to some of the opposing fans. And this is the last one of the season. OK, we're at St James's Park then, and it, it, it's a short walk from anywhere this ground. Wherever you are in Newcastle, you can see the ground towering above. It's almost like a Lowry painting in a way. It's, it's right bang in the city centre. If you've never been before and you go in the away end and you enjoy the match and you want a pint afterwards, you can walk straight out and you're in a pub in seconds. Um, so that has got it going for it in Newcastle. Uh, in terms of football then, last season, frustrating one for Liverpool. Phil Coutinho put them ahead, we were winning 1-0, we thought we were OK, Newcastle equalised in the first half and then it wasn't great from there on in. And Liverpool's record, having a quick look here, you know, it hasn't been great, I think, I think you can romanticise the record a little bit because you'll, you'll remember of course that we beat them 6-0 here under Brendan Rodgers, you'll remember that we beat them 5-1 here when Rafa Benitez was our manager. But recently, not so good. 1-1 last season. Uh, before that, there's 2-0 and 1-0 defeats here and a 2-2 draw as well. That's in 2013, 14 and 15, those results. Uh, there's a little gap, of course, because Newcastle went down and then came straight back up. So how are we going to get on this season? Well, we'll see. But one thing's for sure, if you come to this city and you want a drink, you want something to eat, you want a friendly reception, you want to have a laugh, you can have all of those things in Newcastle. It's a great city. I'm Dave, I'm the manager of the Newcastle store of the back page, just in the shadow of St James's Park. Um, we've been here 15 years and we're a sports memorabilia and football shop. It, it started off originally a lot of programmes and he put all his own collection and things like that into it to start with and it's sort of evolved and grown over the years. Um, loads of licensed product, there's old programmes, there's um, DVDs and then we started doing all our own, own design t-shirts and play on famous t-shirts and things like that but to do with Newcastle. Um, the sign memorabilia came into it and alongside it we started running travel to all the away games um, that Newcastle got to in a minute we've got something like 13 and a half thousand travel members that travel with us. Um, so it's it's gone from strength to strength. Football is the heartbeat of the city. It's You get in a taxi that's the first pe thing people talk about. You, you speak to a little lady down the road they're talking about what's happening at the club. It's it's it becomes a bit of a, a sanctuary for people and we've got loyal customers that come back from all over the world um, and they come in and see us and it, it's, they've become regulars um, and you make good friends and word of mouth travels and then home games we get a lot of away fans coming in and, and you meet a real diverse section of people across the world and it's, it's fantastic and they've just seemed to have clicked onto the idea, they like the humour of the place, they like the look of it and the feel of it and we're just trying to be a bit more personal with people as if you if you go into your sort of your, your high street stores if you like you're just there as a customer, whereas we like to make people a bit more involved. Um, we've, we've had all sorts of things come in over the years. People come in and they'll, they'll sell into us bits of the memorabilia. Um, we had one customer that I can remember that used to get a lot of signed autograph stuff from us. Um, and he actually, serious collector, he went out and bought Shearer's last boots that he wore against Sunderland. Um, he scored his penalty, come off injured, never played again. Um, and he bought those boots and the figure that he paid for them was astronomical but he really wanted us to frame them for him so it was in keeping with the rest of his stuff and they were, they were brilliant to have in the shop. I'm Alex Hurst, I edit the True Faith fanzine, Newcastle United's longest running and now only fanzine, also host and produce the True Faith podcast. And so many people support Newcastle United in the whole region and across the country. I think we are a big club in that sense, not that I'm particularly asked about being called a big club. The fact that we're the biggest club in this area is the most important thing. And because you've got so many people so desperate to talk about the club, learn about the club and find out what's going on, there's still a, a demand for fans, you know, there's still a, a demand for fan writing because there's so much, such a broad, uh, you know, broad range of opinions about there. Everything from the owner to the club, to the players, to the finances. There's always something to talk about in the Newcastle United. 
as a football club, I think there's a bit of affinity between the two cities. And, you know, a lot of Newcastle fans are very passionate about the Hill Hillsborough campaign, very passionate about issues that Liverpool fans seem to take the lead on, like safe standing, um, ticket prices, stuff like that. So I think there's a bit of shared or a bit of love from us to you for that. In addition, I mean, speaking personally and for me and my mates, we'd, we'd, we'd rather the Premier League title stayed in the north. It would be nice for Liverpool to, to, to win that soon. I wouldn't class Manchester particularly as the north, even though it is, but in terms of how those clubs are owned and run, the games between Newcastle and Liverpool always tend to be quite good. Newcastle haven't got a great record in recent times, but you know, Liverpool bring proper way sports in James's Park, which doesn't happen very often, I'm afraid, because we're being up here all the way you like, so Palace and all these, you know, the BBC and Palace, oh, isn't that great? They bring about 900 up to Newcastle, whereas Liverpool, and, and to be fair, Everton as well, will always bring a proper way support Wednesday night, Monday night, whatever it is, so always look forward to those games. Big thanks to Robbo and, of course, to Sam for putting up with him for the whole trip. Uh, that's been a great addition to the shows this year. Hopefully, we'll be doing it again next season with a few new teams to go out and investigate and explore. But in the interest of spreading good news, that's why we're here, um, it seems, based on the information I've been able to gather, that two of Newcastle's big three attacking threats, Jay, that you mentioned earlier, might not be playing. Almiron and Perez both look like they're going to be out injured. So what does that mean for the tactics? Is there only one way to find out? Neil, take it away. Newcastle represented in green. We don't have any black and white striped counters, unfortunately. The big man, Solomon Rondon, he's been terrific for Benitez this season. Benitez will pushed hard to get him, be pleased to have him. He's only there on loan. Reza stat that without uh, Perez and Almiron behind him, his past completion is about 46% uh, with them around. I think it goes over 70%. The point of this is to say that he needs the company. He needs people around and the big man. If you're going to get the ball up to him, ask him to hold it up and bring people into play, well, those people have got to be there. Almiron is out. Uh, he will not be playing. And he's made a real, you know, Newcastle have been excellent since the turn of the year, maybe even a little bit before. I think they're about sixth or seventh in the overall form table for that time. But the influence of Almiron on that has been significant. I always Perez has been banging him in he's looked in great shape he scored last week with a hip injury uh, he was playing at the time I'm not sure he's touch and go as to whether or not he's going to make it it would be a real boost for Liverpool if he didn't if he does it'll be Perez uh, sorry Perez it'll be Atsu uh, there uh, with Rond on there there's a should be a tactical concern for Liverpool. 5-2-3 is the shape that, for instance, um, when Porto came to Anfield, they chose to employ. A couple of sides have enjoyed a 5-2-3 against Liverpool and decided it's their way home. Well, it's the way Newcastle play anyway, 3-4-3 or 5-2-3. He's been fresh enough the midfield. It's likely to be Hayden and Key in the middle of the park. Could be wrong about that one. He could go the army. could go Shelby. You know, Benitez has got options in there, but he's been trying to keep it fresh. Hayden has been a revelation since Christmas, played really, really well. To say 5-2-3 or 3-4-3, three, three, well, this one is Mankio. Uh, and so we know Mankio from his time at Liverpool. He is a fullback. Uh, he may well play in that wing-back position, but he is a full-back, a full-backy full, a full, -back, a full -back. Our lads are wing-backs, and we only play a back four. Matt Ritchie, though, isn't. Creative hub, good player, uh, and will find a way to try to hurt Liverpool over on that left-hand side. Scored a great goal at Bournemouth uh, recently to get a two-all draw. Um, and then at the back, it's likely to be, likely to be, but I could be wrong, Dummett there, uh, Shah there, and I think Lascelles will probably start at the heart of that defence. I think it's going to be hard. Um, I think it's going to be a really, it's, it's the sort of game you do not want in between Champions League semi-finals uh, and Liverpool are going to have to find their way through that. I do think that this is a Newcastle side that can be got at. I think it actually wants to play some football uh, and I think it's a difficult one for Benitez in terms of he loves to get his lads to do a certain job. But in this instance, he may feel Saturday night, last home game of the season, he wants to put a little bit of a show on. And so Newcastle might play a little bit more adventurously than they would have done had this fixture come in October or November when they were scrabbling for any point they could get. We saw them put on quite a boring game against Chelsea at home and look to find their way home through frustrating Chelsea rather than being constructive. I have a feeling they're going to try and be constructive. I have a feeling it's going to be really, really hard, really, really tight. Listen, this is a great football team. I think it'll win out in the end. Thanks again to Neil. You know we love that tactics board just as much as you do. So let's start picking a team for Saturday then. Obviously, we, you've mentioned that there's a quick turnaround of three games in less than six days. So there was probably always going to be in Klopp's mind some rotation. But also, when it comes to the defence, it's the first time in a long while there's been a real genuine conversation about who gets in. We've got quite a few people who could well step up and perform. Jay, I'll put it to you. Do you see, I mean, for example, do you see Trent coming straight back in? 
Do you maybe even see a place for Lovren as well? Uh, I see Trent coming back in. Um, I think I think we, in parts of the game, probably missed them on Wednesday night. Um, and I think in a in a game like Newcastle, where they might be difficult to beat, where we want to, you know, we might get not panicked but hurried and want to get a goal to settle our nerves. I think Trent offers you a, a better th uh, attack and threat than you get from Gomez. So I can see him coming back in. Um, I'm not sure about Lovren. I probably would have thought that we'd have brought Lovren back in, and we still might. But I think Massive was fantastic on was Wednesday best. night. Um, and I'd like to maybe see if he continues that form. He might be tired. I think Liverpool might say they'll give him a blow, but uh, I, th I, th I thought he was fantastic and he deserves to keep his place if that's a, 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 an option. Although Klopp may well be thinking, well, hang on, lad, I've, I've got a plan on. I've got a plan for you know Tuesday night and you're going to be doing a lot, <laughs> a lot of that, chasing Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez now on the pitch, so he might, he might save him for that. So I can certainly see Trent Lovren will probably depend on what Klopp you know, sees in terms of fitness and possible, you know, Tuesday night in his mind. It's an interesting thing about the centre-backs as well, because, <clears throat> like you say, obviously club is very conscious of rest and uh, relaxation, all those kind of things. But there's also a pecking order to think about. Considering so close to the end of the season, there's been a lot of talk about, are we going to retain all four centre-backs we've got on the books because of their injury record? So there's going to be a lot, of, well, between them, they're going to be thinking, well, I want to know that I'm at least first or third, second or third choice. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does here. Yeah, um, see, the th <laughs> before we got beat by Barcelona 3-0, I was very of the mindset of this is not the time to be resting players. We're literally at the, the tail end of the season. We're playing for everything and, and you want your best players to be playing every game. But I think that game, like I said before, mentally and physically will have an effect on some of those players. And it might be wise to, to switch out a few of them. And... I, I do think Trent needs to come back in, really. Uh, and Joe, Joe Gomez didn't play badly. I, he didn't. He's not at fault. He looked tired. But he looked tired. I mean, fair play. He's not actually for getting a full 90 under his belt. I, I didn't think he'd be doing that. I thought maybe maybe if Cater wouldn't have gone off injured, you would have seen Trent come on and, and Gomez go off for a bit of a rest. Don't forget a full 90 against Barcelona. Yeah. I know. With what a game to come back on. And they down the left. So Andy Robertson, he must have been thinking, go and run after him. Yeah. Go and get him. <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone for a bit. But the thing is, like, to be fair, we've done all right with Coutinho. Coutinho gets hooked. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, exactly. Be because Gomez does quite well. But there were spaces and holes where it looked like he was drifting a little bit yeah. central. And I think... Against Newcastle, if they've got... Well, we know they've got Almiron out. Perez is still a bit touch and go. You know, they'll be looking at probably putting Rons on up front on his own. Um, I, I think we need to exploit it and use his pace. So I think Chen comes back in. It depends on what he looks at for Tuesday. I think Massive and Van Dijk are a shoe in I think they're an absolute shoe in for Tuesday. Now, if that affects... The selection on Saturday. I don't know if it's a case of with Matip, let's keep the momentum going. But I think Matip's been dropped out a couple of times now. You know, Lovren started against Huddersfield yeah, and he pulls off a performance like that against Barcelona. Um, so I don't think Matip starts, but I think he starts Tuesday. Whether he goes with Gomez centre half is also another question because, you know, Joe Gomez has just played a full 90. Does he keep that going, you know, to keep the fitness going and maybe no, keep going? No, and he's maybe not going to play against Barcelona then at home. Yeah, and I think maybe, I think especially at home, when we're 3 0 down, we don't need a Joe Gomez really on the right. Playing proper right I think you need, need right I think back. you need Trent who pushes forward. Uh, and and I know this is like a preview for Newcastle, but it, it does take into consideration the oh, game yeah. on Tuesday. So I think for me, it's Trent, Gomez or Lovren. Um, and then um, I'd really like to see Firmino back on the side. Yeah, I think in terms of the front three, I think as long as Bobby shows no adverse reaction, I think we're all happy to go again, aren't we? I mean, Salah was really dangerous I against he was great, Barcelona. You know? yeah, he was really good. Did he? No, and, and I, I did wonder if that was his passing or that was that there was no one there for him. That takes up that natural like five yards away from him position, which Bobby does. My my wonder though with Bobby is there was just a look in his face when he came on. He yeah. just didn't. He looked exhausted. He looked like he'd been working hard to try and get fit. And I just wonder how fit he actually is. Yeah. I wonder if there, there were rumours doing the rounds, you know, prior to him being out of the Huddersfield game that he was he was done for the season. And you do wonder how close to reality that might actually be. I wouldn't mind if if that's the case because I agree. I think he did look tired and I think he looked he looked injured to me. Um, if we need Bobby on full form, 
which we do for Tuesday. Again, it depends on what we think of Newcastle. As much as I'm not a fan of them starting from the beginning, I wouldn't be adverse to Divock on the left and Manny through the middle. I yeah. think when Manny's through the middle, um, he's boss. And I think the next best person after Firmino to do that is Manny. It's not Daniel Sturridge for me. And it's not Divock Origi in the middle. No. So I would rather him go Divock on the left. If he wants to, now with Cater injured, if he wants to stick Shaqiri on, I'd be more than happy with that as well. Uh, but if Firmino doesn't play, I'd rather see Manny through the middle than trying to compensate for the role that Firmino does and let Manny be his own. Because yeah. no one else can do that role. No, no. And like you were saying before about the Salah's passes, it's the intelligence of knowing where he's going to be and yeah. the, the, the partnership that they've built up over the last couple of years, yeah. it's hard to replicate. Sturridge is an interesting one because he's not on the bench Wednesday. I think most, I think to be honest, deep down, he'd have been quite glad. The idea of him having to run around on that massive pitch, yeah. it, it'd probably go him out in the cold sweat. But St James's Park, maybe a, a lot off the bench, that might be something for him. But unfortunately, it seems like Cater is not going to be available. I mean, reports have come out today that he's going to be missing for the rest of the season. Which is such a shame for the lad when he just got to the brim. He was just coming to the ball nicely. And obviously, we've spoken a lot about rest and all those kind of things. And all five of the other midfielders all got some game time midweek. So, the question I'm putting to you, Lizzie (laughs) there was one midfielder who's technically back in the squad who wasn't playing midweek. He wasn't even on the bench, a certain Mr. Chambo. Yeah. Do you think we might see him get his first start? No. No? No. Am I being too excited? I, Mo, I, Mo got a proper <laughs> disappointment. <laughs> oh. Bum bum. <laughs> Sorry, Mo. No, no, no. This um, is why I asked the question. I do think you'll see him play. I do. I think you'll see him play. I just don't think you see him start. And I just think there's too much at stake. And it's not that we don't trust him, but he's got no game time. He's got no match fitness. This is where we need everyone to be at peak, even if it's Newcastle. And I don't mean that harsh, but some people will see it that way. We need we need our best 11. And if it is right that Kate is out for the season, I mean, I would have played Kate. I definitely would have played Kate in this game. I'm looking at maybe not for being young for this game. I think he's got a tough, tough task on Tuesday again. And I think he had a tough, tough task on Wednesday, which will need to be replicated. And the energy that that must have taken out of him, you know, um, literally just being tagged to Lionel Messi and just throwing him body, you know, bumps all over the show. I don't know if Fabinho plays. I think because Henderson didn't start, I think you see Henderson start against Newcastle. I do. I think Genie starts. I think Genie starts, he goes off and Genie is not going to be playing in that position against uh, no. Newcastle. I don't know if that was... Or maybe ever again. <laughs> Never again, yeah. I mean, I wasn't sure just quickly on the Barcelona game if that was a conscious decision for to just pat out the midfield to stop Barcelona, but that's another conversation. But Genie, I think, comes in. I think Henderson comes in with no cater. Actually, I don't think he plays Milner, so maybe it has to be Fabinho because we haven't got cater. I don't think he'd play Shaqiri. It does seem like... In, again, in a midfield, anyway. I think no. if he's using Shaqiri... Unless, I don't know, I think he's throwing carefuls. We didn't expect that team. I don't, I think, I think if Firmino doesn't play, I think he'll want him to play. If Firmino doesn't play, I think you're seeing Divock on the left and I think you're seeing Manny through the middle. But I don't know if, if Divock is playing, I don't think you see Shaqiri play and I think Firmino comes in. I think he's going to be more conventional for this game, yeah. So I think it's, if, if there's no Firmino, it's Bobby. It's it, Divock. If Bobby plays... You know, I think you're seeing a midfield and you're probably seeing Fabinho anyway. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to have to see him just by dint of injuries. Yeah. Lallana's disappeared back out. Yeah. Chamberlain isn't fit. You know, it showed in the Huddersfield game. Mm-hmm. Really great to have the lad back. Be bossed to give him 10 minutes here and there. In case maybe you want half an hour from him against, you know, if, if for Wolves and you're chasing a goal and you need a player like that, you, you, you throw every attacker yeah, you've yeah, got yeah, on. Yeah. You know, no one's playing in goal. It's goal you needed. But <laughs> but I think for now, I think it's, no, it's, it's, it's probably the usual side and tested. So it'll be, you know, Milner or Fabinho with Henderson and Wijnaldum and then either the front three on the place one for, for an E. OK, so it's time to get some predictions on how you think this game will go. Now, luckily the people who get paid to do these kind of things still think that we are heavy favourites. I've seen on oh, oh, Reds Bet you can get 8-1 to one to Newcastle to win a home game, which when I tell you how good they are at home, is staggering. 
That's like a compensation bet. I can't bring Don't do that, that Lizzie. <laughs> I can't bring you myself bet, to if, do it. If I see I'm you going out, out, if I hear you, your, your night out in Newcastle was free because of your bet. <laughs> Honestly, God, I won't be on another one of these. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so give, give me a score prediction then. What do you think? I don't think it's going to be a battering. I think 2-0. I'm going, I think... I think it'll be 1 0, but I'm going to say 2 0 because I don't think my nerves will cope with watching it. It'll be 10 minutes to go and I'll be crying. So, no, I'm going for, I'm going for 2 0 as well. Yeah, I think that'll suit me. Full house of 2 0s. Uh, hopefully, it'll suit you lot as well. We get some positivity back into the team. We get to watch our lads go out and win a big game once again and hopefully take that momentum on for the rest of the season. Uh, big thanks to Joe. Big thanks to Lizzie. Uh, one more task for you lot out there, or maybe two. Subscribe if you haven't already. Download our new app if you haven't already. And check out all the new videos we're going to be coming out over the next couple of days. Some more about the Barcelona game, some more to do with Newcastle, and just some more good stuff up the Reds.